Hello everyone, hope you are all doing well. Thank you so much for watching my videos. This video, we are going to cover a different topic than our series of videos which we have been talking about. We are going to talk about something called the dry dock. Dry dock from the name itself, it says dry dock. Usually the ship docks in a wet port. That is, the water is there in the dock and goes near the berth where there is still water. And then she does her loading and discharging whatever she does. But what we are talking about is the dry dock. That means it is the dock is going to be dry. Look, there is no water in the dock. So when is that required? It is not required for cargo operations. Basically, it is required for the maintenance purpose. So that is what we are going to see in this video. Let's jump into the video. Dry docks. Basically, this you would have heard in the office where if, uh, if you are not a uh, shippy or from a non seafaring background then you would have always wondered what is this word dry dock and if you tell the seafarers specifically the senior officers they are little hesitant if you tell the vessel is due for dry dock and she might go for dry dock during your tenure so basically it is part of the maintenance system of the vessel where the underground underwater part is brought above the water to do maintenance in the underwater pot which is not usually visible during the normal course of operation of the vessel so basically it has three different parts it is prior the dry dock during the dry dock and after the dry dock prior the dry dock the dry dock preparation starts almost four to six months prior it in the during the dry dock it takes 15 to 20 days or a month during the dry dock and post dry dock you have to re-prepare the vessel for the next cargo operation the preparation usually for the dry dock includes first preparation of something called what's the dry dock specifications in short form we usually you would have heard dd specs this is what is the term used basically what are the repairs which need to be done in the dry dock for dry ships hot work can be done during the normal course of operation of the ship however if the ship is a tanker or a chemical tanker or any kind of tanker for that matter it is very difficult to do hot work during the normal course of operation of the vessel and hence dry dock is a very important part of the maintenance schedule where the pending jobs which cannot be conducted in the normal course of operation is completed after the dry dock preparation rather including the, the preparation of the dry dock specs the actual schedule of the vessel to the dry dock and prior that after the last cargo discharge then the tanks cargo tanks basically have to be prepared for the dry dock in case of dry ships that is containers and bulk carriers not much has to be done in terms of preparation for the cargo holds however in case of tankers specifically in tankers which are carrying dirty cargo that is crude oil or heavy oil then the preparation is very hectic and very extensive because all the traces of hydrocarbon have to be removed from the ship Basically, hydrocarbon is the cargo which is being carried. Uh, the crude oil or the heavy oil are part of or all contain the hydrocarbon. Okay, you have a preparation of you know, cleaning the tanks which is called crude oil washing. You, you wash the tank with the crude oil itself which they are carrying. Plus, you have a hot water wash. Then, it goes through a cycle of inerting and gas ring which I will not go into very, very deep. Basically, we have to remove all the hydrocarbon from the vessel's tanks so that people can easily go inside and come out of the tank. Usually during the normal course of operation for the next two years, two and a half years till the vessel goes to the dry dock, no one can enter the tank once the ship is ready, made ready for the cargo after the dry dock. Hence preparation for dry dock and cleaning the tanks and gas the tanks is a very very important task for tankers. Once the vessel reaches the dry dock, then the first thing there is somebody called the chemist who comes on board and checks the oxygen level and the hydrocarbon levels in the tank if he is satisfied then he is certifies the vessel as gas free then the vessel goes to the dry dock dry dock is basically you can imagine is like a bathtub where one side of the bathtub is open the ship comes inside the bathtub and then the gate is closed and the water is drained out hence the ship sits on something called the blocks this block is also not randomly placed they have a proper block plan so that you know where the blocks have to be kept all uh, designed and planned before because they have to look at the 
plugs there are tanks which have bottom plugs also which can you can just drain it out you have plugs in the bottom side of the tanks and all those have to be taken care they have some other equipments also under the water hence the block plan is a very very important document which states where the block have to be kept okay so once the ship sits on the block then what happens then the inspection of the underwater hull takes place the surveyor comes he inspects there will be a lot of undergrowth there will be a lot of sea growth there will be a lot of barnacles which will be growing on the ship side so all those have to be cleaned and the ship nicely painted there are some inspections also done of the propeller rudder etc that everything is in fine then the once the ship is painted then the ship is refloated basically the dry dock usually goes for around 20 days 30 30 days uh, in a standard practice where there are no steel renewals per se if the ship is old and uh, if, if the surveyor feels you know the ship's thickness of outside hull is become thin then maybe he might recommend some steel renewal that means you would have to cut and replace some parts of the vessel outside hull so in that case it might take a little longer but usually the total duration is 20 to 30 days in the 20 to 30 days the ship is actually in the dry dock maybe maximum to 10 to 12 days or 14 days because the dock space is very very precious and it is very very important and the whole dry dock period itself is very tightly packed you know that is the main reason where the seafarer senior officers usually are a little hesitant because it becomes very very hectic from the preparation of the dry dock like preparing the dd specs itself is a lot of documentation then the final preparation if there is uh, the tanker then you have a lot of equipment which have been not been used for last two years all those things should be activated and then we have to use them and in the dry dock because the time is short because every day in the dry dock is a non-earning day for the owner hence he wants to make it very very short until unless you have a major repair or anything he wants to make it as small as possible so that is main reason for the senior officers to little hesitate if you tell the vessel is due for trade off if they have already attended trade off in their previous ships etc junior officers and ratings are usually interested because they get to go outside and the junior officers also have a lot of opportunity for learning because there will be a lot of equipment which will be opened, opened up which are not opened up during the normal course of operation and also the underwater portion which uh, usually nobody sees during the normal operation is visible and you can go down and inspect and you have a lot of learning opportunities for the junior officers. Hence, the seafarer's perspective, it is a little hectic duration for the dry dock period. Now let's go into the technical side of the dry dock and we will see what are the types of dry docks. What is a dry dock? As mentioned, the dry dock is a, like a giant bathtub for ships. It is spe specially designed structure that can be filled with water or drained of water to allow ships to be raised out of the water and onto a platform. When a ship enters the dry dock, the water is pumped out and the ship sits on a solid surface exposed to the air. This allows workers to access the ship's hull and perform maintenance, repairs or modifications if any required. The dry dock provides a controlled environment for working on ships. Once the work is complete, the dry dock is refilled with water and the ship is floated back into the water to continue its operations. Basically, as I mentioned, the dry dock period per se, the actual the ship is in dry dock is around uh, maybe a week or 10 to 12 days maximum. Then after that, it is shifted to something called the repair berth, where the other repairs which are not required for the ship to be outside the water are completed before the vessel sails out for her next cargo. Graving dry dock, this is one of the type of dry dock which we have been talking about till now. It is a rectangular shaped pit in the ground lined with concrete walls. Ships are floated into the graving dock and then the dock is pumped dry to allow access to the ship's hull for repair and maintenance. Basically, it's like a bathtub and the ship floats in and then they close the gate and then the water is pumped out. Floating dry dock. If you see the diagram, it is very clear where there is a platform which is floating and in between there is a ship station. So the platform itself has ballast tanks which are basically seawater tanks which are filled up to sink the platform below the water line. So once this platform, the bottom platform is sunk below the water, then the ship is floated into the 
dry dock and then uh, the the water is pumped out from the platform so that the platform rises and the ship sits on the platform so basically this is why this is required because this is this this dry dock itself can be moved from place to place and that is mobile so that becomes that makes it easier for the ships to approach the dry dock and then the dry dock can approach the ships etc and if there is a business change the environmental change then the dry dock can be shifted to another location floating dry dock is a self contained mobile platform with watertight compartments that can be flooded to submerge the dock once the ship is inside the floating dock the compartments are pumped out raising the dock and lifting the vessel out of the water marine railway dry dock this is basically for smaller ships which can which are literally pulled out of water they basically are made to sit on a cradle when the ship is still floating and then the ship is pulled with the cradle onto the rail and onto the dry dock is a sloping platform on which the ship is hauled out of the water using a set of railway tracks the ship is mounted on wheeled cradles or carriages which are then pulled up the slope by winches okay so the basically the ship stays on the rails till the dry dock is complete and then it is again refloated back into the water now coming to the regulations i as i mentioned the owners are not very happy with the ship going to the dry dock because even though it's part of the required maintenance schedule it takes the ship out of service and enters into a non earning period what is the regulation which requires the ships to undergo dry docks this is coming from the chapter 1 regulation 10 of the solas convention solas convention is basically the safety of life at sea convention from imo i have made a detailed video on the various conventions which are being promulgated by the imo which you can go and watch the video for more information what is the chapter 1 regulation tell tell about merchant vessels must be dry docked at least once every 5 years okay so this is part of the harmonized system of surveys and certifications where the first year is the initial then the second year is the annual third year is something called the intermediate audit the intermediate can be either on the second year or the third year if the second year is the intermediate then the third year becomes annual or if the third year is the intermediate then the second year becomes annual the fourth year is again an annual inspection and the fifth year becomes the renewal all this this is the part of the harmonized system of surveys and certifications where all the ship certificate are renewed in this five year cycle this is because it is not practical for the vessel to present itself for various kinds of certificate because the vessel requires hundreds of certificates which to operate the vessel hence if it is not harmonized it will be like you know every port there is some new inspection coming up hence the system of harmonized system has started so that all the inspections are done together to avoid extra burden on the ship staff two of the five year dry docking inspection must be conducted in the dry dock the interval between any two dry dock inspections must be not later than 36 months so the duration difference between two dry docks should not increase 36 months that is 3 years what is done in dry dock what we have already seen hull inspection and repairs propeller and rudder inspection and repairs if any underwater hull cleaning hull painting repair of underwater pipes and equipments in engine room which are not possible during the normal course of operation because all these pipes and machineries will be submerged that will be below the water line maybe inside the ship and dry but it will be below the water line so as soon as we open the pipe or the machinery the water will start gushing in hence it is very important to operate or maintain these pipelines and machineries once the vessel in the dry that completes the small and short video on what is dry dock and various aspects from the technical regulation and the seafarers side and i hope it has given you a fair idea of what dry dock is and what type of dry docks are used and what is the seafarers perspective on dry dock if you like the video click the like button and share the video as much as possible in your circles thank you so much for watching my videos we'll see you next time thank you so much have a nice day take care bye bye